New Hampshire for projected storm surge, sea level rise, and extreme precipitation. So welcome to you, Kyle, and also welcome to Senator David Waters, State Senator Waters, who's here tonight. And if you'd like to say something at the beginning, maybe at the end, yeah. perfect. We would be happy to, to have that. So Kyle is, you have the center stage. Great. So <laughs> I'd like to keep this as informal as possible. So. As I'm going through the slides, if something doesn't make sense or if I say something that you know is a little bit confusing, feel free to just interrupt or that, that's totally fine. Um, basically, what this presentation is going to go over is a summary of uh, the New Hampshire Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission, what we accomplished, and looking at some of the vulnerabilities and risks that came out of that report, and finally, what are some of the steps and recommendations um, for towns to think about moving forward. Um, so to give a, you know, a very brief overview about the, the commission, um, when this all started to evolve, uh, New Hampshire, because we're a Dillon Rule state, we need the legislator to authorize communities to, to take action. So we need to have a better understanding of what risks and vulnerabilities we needed. So back in 2013, there was bipartisan legislation that was proposed as part of Senate Bill 163, where three senators, uh, David Waters, Nancy Stiles, and Mark Clark, got together and they put this forward. Um, it did. This committee did have a clear and focused mission um, as part of that law and RSA that came out of that RSA 483E. Um, the clear and focused mission, and I'll read right from the RSA to recommend legislation, rules, and other actions to prepare for projected, projected sea level rise and other coastal and coastal watershed hazards such as storms, increasing flooding, and stormwater runoff, and the risks such as hazards posed to municipalities and state assets in New Hampshire. So really what we were thinking as part of this group was to gather information, get as much scientific information as we could, either through NOAA, and make recommendations that communities could pick and choose from depending on their their vulnerability. The other big thing that came out of this commission was its broad-based membership. Um, it was comprised of 37 different representatives, all 17 coastal zone municipalities. I believe that for Rollinsburg was Patrick Carroll was your representative. Um, a number of state agencies and other important stakeholders, including insurance um, sector. So it was a very wide um, committee and it, it very well attended. All the all the commission meetings were all very well attended. Um, and the last, it, it, this group um, sunset in December 1st of 2016. So it was a um, roughly a two and a half year um, project. So the first question that we came up was where do we even begin um, to sort of start thinking about this? And over the course of two and a half years, the commission met 20 times um, that, and that doesn't include all the subcommittees that were a part of this commission. There were a number of different subcommissions um, that were a part of this. And they, their goal was to develop this draft report that um, you have in front of you. The town should have, I think, two or three copies of the, of the final report. Um, and taking this on, the three things that the report really highlight are understanding what we're facing, understanding our risk and vulnerabilities, and understanding what to do. So in that first one is the science. Um, and what we uh, did for that was we hired, or not hired, but um, we put together a science and technical advisory panel to write that document. And we based all of the stuff moving forward out of that document. The second piece was looking at our risk and vulnerabilities. We didn't do any new studies, but there were already existing studies that were done, including the Ties to Storm project in Rockingham and the Sea Rise project that was going on at the same time in the Great Bay communities. Um, and then finally putting together some, some recommendations. Uh, to start talking about what we're facing uh, and what came out of the Science and the Technical Advisory Panel, um, these were experts that were put together and these are based on emission scenarios. I'm sure you've seen this table before. Um, but th this, this report emphasizes um, that looking out to 2050, um, some of the lower scenarios, either 0.6 feet, the intermediate 1.3, or 2.0 sea level rise scenarios by 2050. If you go out to 2100, 
1.6 feet is that intermittent low, the intermittent high is 3.9 feet, and 6.6 .6 feet is the highest. Um, those projections that range 0.6 to 2.0 by 2050 and 1.6 to 6.6 .6 is a recommendation that's coming out of that report for communities to start thinking about when they're thinking about long-term um, investments in infrastructure. And this, again, this is all sort of laid out uh, in, the, in the plan. The next section is, looks at storm surge. Um, and there wasn't a lot of information in terms of coming up with specific conclusions on storm surge, um, other than we anticipate that they're going to increase in frequency and intensity. Um, and that uh, today's floodplain is likely to be flooded more frequently by these types of storms. So some of the projections that came out of the STAP, uh, the inundation extent will probably increase, as will the frequency and the flood duration. And thinking about how to prepare for that, add uh, projected sea level rise heights to current storm surge heights in terms of um, new developments. And the last was looking at extreme precipitation. So again, uh, this is really hard to determine in terms of what uh, increases you're going to see, but definitely more frequency in those high intensity rain events and the amount. Um, we could see as high as 20% increase by the end of the 21st century. Um, and at minimum, the staff recommends that buildings and infrastructure be designed to withstand storm increases based on the Northeast Climate Center projections, which is, if you've heard of the Cornell Atlas, those are those, are, um, those precipitation uh, events, as opposed to what communities were using was that TP40, that technical paper 40, which was looking at uh, precipitation events happening from the 1940s through the 1950s. Well, if I can interrupt for a minute, sure. precipitation events in town have happened already, mm -hmm. as far as causing infrastructure um, difficulties for us. So we had a, a, a bridge, the old Mill Lane Bridge, that services two houses, but the state said, you know, that all this washout is just um, making the bridge dangerous and you're going to have to replace it. So we did. And, it, and then the rains that ended up, it closed Sligo Road. That was part of the issue we had with Sligo Road. Mm -hmm. And it also led to some of the issues with uh, Partridge Lane, although that they were compounded by a culvert that was just aging, but you know there was also you know the, all the washout that came because of the rain event. So we so we so we see that now. Right, and what they're what is coming out of the staff um, is saying that those types of storms we might see a 15 percent increase um, to start planning for that um, when you're starting to. Think about long-term 50 to 75 year investments. Um, so moving on to talk a little bit about our risks and uh, vulnerabilities. I'm not going to read through all of these, but this is how the report was broken down um, into these four sections. The economy, um, the built landscape, natural resources, and heritage. Um, so if you have a chance to look through the report, that's how each one of those, how the report is structured is based around these four different topic areas. So to give some highlights, what's in the report, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, this slide here shows uh, the number of parcels uh, that are affected and uh, the value of those parcels. So in the light shade of blue, you can see the affected parcels that are in the Atlantic Coast communities. Um, if we just focus in on the worst case scenario, so if we go to the 6.3 feet of sea level rise with the storm surge, you can see just over 7,000 um, parcels that are affected in the Atlantic coast, about 1,600 uh, in the Great Bay area. Uh, and then if you look at the next two lines, the, the value is about, what is that, 4.4 billion uh, and 400 or $805 million uh, in Great Bay. I will say right now that those numbers are very high. And the way that this analysis was done was it took the extent of the furthest sea level rise, and if any parcel touched that, it got calculated. So that took into consideration the land and the building. The building could be 500 yards away, but there was no way for us to do that analysis to do that, so we all lumped it together. So those numbers are probably high. Um, to give you an idea, 
um, for Rollinsburg. There were 27 parcels that were impacted by this. How many? 27. Um, with a value of approximately about $6 million. Um, however, there was only one home that was actually impacted. So 27 parcels, but only one home in Rollinsburg. This is looking at our, our uh, built landscape. This is more focused in on uh, natural resources. So you can see uplands, uh, some infrastructure, critical facilities, roadways, transportation assets, and a 100-year floodplain. Uh, what we did see is a lot of state and local roadways throughout the coastal region and the Great Bay region uh, are impacted through storm surge and sea level rise. Um, many municipalities um, see flooding. Um, already uh, for the sea rise project. Uh, for Rollinsford, if you want to just focus in on that last category again, uh, for Upland, about 29 acres are impacted in Rollinsford. Only two infrastructure sites, it's the two culverts on Sligo Road uh, mm -hmm. that we've talked about before. There are no critical facilities, so no police, fire, um, town hall. Um, there's about a quarter mile of roadway. Uh, it's just Fresh Creek Road and Sligo Road are the two roads that are potentially impacted. No other transportation assets and roughly about 33 acres of existing floodplain that would capture some of that flooding already. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of the impacts for, for Rollinsburg. Um, another thing that we noticed too is that the impacts in the Great Bay community compared to the coast is vastly different. Um, the impacts that they're seeing in terms of their critical facilities, their roadways, is much, much more vulnerable than the Great Bay communities. Um, moving on to natural resources, these natural systems. Um, what we did for this um, analysis, we looked at the Wildlife Action Plan, we looked at the Land Conservation Plan for New Hampshire Coastal Watersheds, um, and we got an idea of what are some natural resources that are particularly vulnerable. Um, loss of certain habitats, specifically this, these two maps are, show the, the Hampton Seabrook um, estuary, the salt marsh, what sea level rise does to salt marsh migration or salt marsh habitat in general. And you can see on the left hand side in that yellow is existing salt marsh. And if you look at the one projected out, all of that brown color is now mud flats. And the salt marsh has, for the most part, been inundated and no longer exists. There are some places where there, it allows for salt marsh to move, um, but these systems in the Hampton Seabrook area are very, very vulnerable, and we may see lots of loss of that, that habitat. Um, for, uh, for Rollinsford, there are about 40 acres of existing conservation land that uh, were impacted. Uh, lands identified in the Wildlife Action Plan include the Salmon Falls River and Shenard Brook. And then some other areas that are identified in the conservation focus areas are Fresh Creek and Garden Brook and Lower Pachico River. So those areas are already identified as either having special habitats or um, some other reason why that those lands are, are high in, um, for, for certain natural resources. So those, not a whole lot of impacts, but there are, there are some. Moving on to our heritage, uh, this was really looking at recreational, cultural, and historic resources. Um, they support New Hampshire's tourism industry, so they're very, very important to make sure that we, we think about those. Uh, it creates a very important sense of place for, for residents and for visitors. Um, the graph that you see up here just shows a, a vulnerability analysis that was done looking at uh, above ground historical resources. Um, it should be noted that less than about 11% of the coastal region has been inventoried. So they've got a long way to go in terms of, of figuring some of this out. Um, and a lot of them are above ground. That doesn't take into consideration anything that was below ground. For Rollinsford, nothing popped up in terms of, of historic uh, significance. Not to say that they're isn't anything along the Salmon Falls River, but the database that we had, nothing in the, the historic register, those are the ones that we had access to in terms of spatial data, but there isn't to say that there could be some sites along the Salmon Falls that might be, have some sort of archeological. Mike's ancestors have a home that's really in a, a low-lying area on the, on the Salmon Falls. On Salmon Falls. 
And I'm sure that I know that in working on uh, the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission, the historic resources, we're expecting to get better and more data from them in the upcoming years. They're doing a few studies now. Um, and they should have some of that spatial data where we'll be able to see that on a map. As of right now, a lot of it just doesn't exist. So after we figured out what our vulnerabilities were, we all started to sort of ask ourselves, well, what do we do now? And this commission had these a couple of different guiding principles. Um, and the first one was acting early. And by starting now um, and thinking about reconstruction and redevelopment and how to start incorporating some of these things now, it's going to offer minimal costs or at least less cost down the line. So thinking, acting early in the planning stage um, is definitely beneficial when thinking about things down the line. Respond incrementally. Um, because climate change is there's so many different levels of, of uncertainty, their communities don't necessarily feel like they have to um, strategize and put things in place right now. Think about responding incrementally, doing things starting now, but thinking out how you can start doing that over time. Putting things in your capital improvements program, so you, if there's going to be a large cost to upgrade a culvert and you can't afford to do it now, Maybe you can do it in 10 years if you put that in your CIP now. That way, you, you know, the town can afford it without having a major crisis with budget. So start thinking about that incrementally. Revisit and revise. Um, it's really important to start thinking about a lot of these plans as um, plans that, have a, that, that shouldn't just sit, sit on a shelf and that they're alive and that a lot of these things need to be revisited just like the science. Um, we know that the Science and Technical Advisory Panel is going to look at the science every, I think it's like two to five, five. Year, two five. To five every five, five years. years. Every five years they're going to revisit that and update those numbers so we constantly have more information. So those projections outward will start to get they, they, we little... Hopefully the ranges will start to get a little bit more precise. Um, the, this, I mean, I don't want to sound like an alarmist, but the, the newest NOAA projections we have it in as 6.6 .6 is the high. I think it's all the way up to the high being 8.2 or 8.3. Um, specifically with the instability of the Antarctic ice sheet, those flood levels, those sea level rise the, levels. The are, Greenland ice mass that's melting. Yeah, so there's, there's things that, uh, that instability and that uncertainty, what the trend seems to be is the direction of those numbers tending to go up a little bit, but every five years we're hoping to get mm -hmm. some better information. Um, collaborate and coordinate, so state and municipalities both share assets and infrastructure, um, so to work together to align policies, make sure that any assumptions and responses about future risks are done together. Um, incorporating risk tolerance into design, um, thinking about the most appropriate design standards for protection, um, low risk values, um, easily replacing a structure, how easy it is to replace it now or to do it in the future. Start thinking about that when, when designing things long term. And this was sort of a, you know, a, a, I guess I wouldn't say famous, but this was definitely something that we've heard a lot was making no regrets decisions. Um, you know, with the uncertainty of coastal hazards, something that you can do now might be beneficial for the town community, even if we don't see 6.6 .6 level uh, feet of sea level rise. But if you do something proactive, it's going to be good for the town anyway. Like fixing the Sligo Road culvert. Fixing those culverts. <laughs> those are going to be good for you anyway. So making those no regrets decisions moving forward um, was, was the last guiding principle. And in my opinion, one, probably one of the most important ones out of, these, out of this group. Um, then the, the final half of the, or not half, but the, I guess the last third of the plan really focus in on the goals, recommendations, and actions. They're broken down into these four different goals. Um, they're, the first one is being science, the second one is in assessment, the third implementation is for legislation. Again, I'm not going to read through all these, it's all broken out into the report, um, but just you know, to, for reference, this is how the goals, recommendations, and actions are all, all broken out. To just highlight one that has already been accomplished, uh, this is uh, Senate Bill 452. So this was requiring certain state agencies to conduct an audit of laws governing coastal regions to enable authorities to take appropriate actions. 
This was something that came directly out of this report that has already been established um, at the state legislature. Um, it was approved uh, June 6th of last year. And after this, I think Senator Waters is going to talk about another um, bill that has been passed in the last couple of days that also came out of this report. So, you know, we, we sunset in December 1st or December 1st, 2016, and we've already had at least a handful of bills that have already gone through to, to sort of implement. The other thing to sort of think about is for communities, where do we go from here? How do we use this? There's this project, the Setting Sail project, which, Suzanne, you know of, um, as offering technical assistance for all the Great Bay communities to implement recommendations from the report. Um, Can I just, just so that we're sure. all reminded, this is the, the program, the grant of which we received, so that Kyle is helping us uh, come up with strategies for repackaging and reapplying for assistance for this slide of road culprits. Yeah, so I mean, I might as well just sort of go to this slide to just give a you know, very brief summary. Um, the coastal program at DES because they're part of a coastal management zone, they're eligible for certain funding sources. And one of these funding sources is from NOAA, it's called the Project Special Merit. And we applied with a number of different agencies, Rockingham Planning, the Great Bay uh, National Research Reserve, um, UNH Cooperative Extension, there's, a, and I, I think I'm missing one in there, but we all applied together for this particular uh, funding source. And a part of that, is this grant opportunity for communities. Initially, we said we were gonna offer about $6,000 per community, um, but the way that the money shook out, Rollinsford ended up getting 7,000 in technical assistance. So that $7,000 in technical assistance uh, funding is gonna fund either myself or someone from the Planning Commission to do those three topic areas. So we decided we were gonna look at a number of different past grant applications that the, the town has already submitted whether they were successful or not, we're still going to review them. Um, determine how the sea uh, rise culvert data that was collected as part of the stormwater center um, did uh, an analysis on those two culverts on Sligo Road. And we've already talked to your uh, engineers about how that data can be used. I know that they quoted you for um, some work to be done on, on looking at at least one of those. They gave us a task order, which we have not yet authorized. Right. And likely won't, certainly not this fiscal year, to look at the, there's a culvert that's either side by side or one on top of the other, I can never remember which, we call it a double, double culvert. Yep. And neither one provides enough flow through, pardon my lack of technical ability to articulate it, but the, it, you know, it just isn't sufficient. Mm -hmm. And there is, I know, erosion on the Salmon Falls side. Uh, so, it, you know, it's not an issue today, but it's something we have to keep in mind. Right. Again, we're not sure exactly what the right solution is, which is why or when we, you know, we consider uh, talking to some engineers. Right. And, and we're, what we're hoping is that whatever engineers you decide to use, they'll be able to use some of the stormwater data as opposed to them redoing something that has already been done. Um, and then the third um, piece of this is to develop some sort of skeleton framework of a grant application where when funds become available, you'll be able to just send that out because you'll have all the information that was already needed. The other thing that we're working on too is com coming up with a complete list of eligible funding sources. So if you're, and this is strictly, I mean, it's, it's strictly gonna be for culvert replacements, but what we intend to do is pull any sort of eligible funding source that will fund a culvert upgrade and give you that information. Are there match requirements? What agency does the funding? Is it Homeland Security? Is it FEMA? Is it DOT? Um, and how often those funding sources become available. So you'll have sort of a list of these are the eligible um, grant funds that are available and then have a framework already set up so you can just sort of plug and play and send those out as needed. So that's the scope of the technical assistance grant. Um, this grant goes through March of 2017, uh, 2018. So we should have all those deliverables to you sometime in, I would say, January, February okay, time good. frame. So, I just remembered something. I, I was wrong. Our application was not up on Land Security. It was through FEMA. FEMA? Through FEMA's hazard mitigation. And the program was linked to an event. 
So because it was the Mother's Day, is that the storm that I'm thinking of? There was, that was a, 2007 or six. Yeah, we'll well, seven. no, that was no, it was later than that. So it wasn't. Okay. But it was a storm event that we could link the uh, the difficulty to. Yep. And that's why it went through FEMA. So okay. that, uh, we could say because of the storm event, you know, this site has become even more in peril, blah, blah, blah. So it was FEMA. So it went to a review panel with the state that had FEMA personnel, maybe Homeland Security too, but it's really sort of a FEMA uh, directed review panel. And then it went to national FEMA. And, what, and parts, you know, part of this opportunity is to, to get some feedback on that, that particular yes. application. Mm -hmm. So I know that that was a, a pretty big number. It was like 260,000. It went through something. two iterations. The first that sounds right for the first one. The second one may actually have been a little bit more. Maybe that should have been in the 300s. Okay. But either way, the idea is to get the community some feedback on that particular application. You know, were there things missing? Were there things that could help strengthen those applications moving forward to? you know, increase your likelihood of being funded by those and implementing some of that. So um, we thought it was a, a great project, and I would like to sort of thank the board for signing off and providing a letter um, and, and participating in, in, the, in the grant process. So that's great. And that's it for me. Um, here's the, there's the website link up there if you want to download the report. Um, they have fact sheets. Um, they have little one-pagers about the report, about the staff report. Uh, really easy to sort of print out and guide through it. They also have information about the setting sail project. Um, so there's a number of different uh, resources on that website if you want to. Well, we can certainly link to that too from our own website. You so can. That's why I'm making. Yep. About to make a note here. So that would be a great thing. Yeah, and that website is, I mean, that's pretty new. They've just sort of revamped that. It's, it's pretty slick. So they've done, a, they've done a pretty good job. So we're going to ask Dr. Uh, uh, Senator Waters to make a few comments. Sure. But before, can, can we just see if there are questions out there that you might like to ask, and maybe Kyle or Senator Waters can help answer Any, anything out there? All right, then Senator Waters, thank you for your influential role. In, uh, well, in well, thank you. I uh, just wanted to say what a great report Kyle gave and uh, laying this all out. And um, when I put in Senate Bill 163, it was just my hope that we could produce a report like this and do something you know kind of unique that we would have an opportunity to get all the municipalities in the area and state agencies, realtors, home builders, Homeland Security, all kinds of people in the same room. And we got them there for two and a half years. Um, in order to come together in a unanimous planning process, both on the anticipation of sea level rise, the storm surge, and extreme precipitation, and then the unanimous um, approval of this of this report across the political spectrum, towns of all different kinds of uh, approaches. Quite an achievement. Um, and the, the point, though, is that really uh, it, it is a planning document, uh, meaning, okay, here is 100 pages of analysis and evaluation and then potential actions that you can take. But you know what's best for Rollinsford and what the impacts here will be different from, from elsewhere. So what is it? it's a plan document, kind of a roadmap, but then what counts is um, what kind of tools that you might need, whether from Stratford Regional Planning or through state legislation or through state agencies to get done what you need, what you need to do. Um, because, you know, this Senate Bill 163 is my bill, and uh, we got it through bipartisan support, 432 as well, which now says that all the state agencies, you know, DOT, DES, Michigan, you name it, have to be on the same page and use this report's predictions uh, in their coordinated planning process for whatever money they're going to put in the roads, bridges, and so forth. Um, I did introduce Senate Bill 185 this session, which has just been signed by the Governor, and that really takes the next step. It says to municipalities, you can use the provisions of, provisions of uh, 79E, which is the historic district. Um, but it says that not just for historic buildings, but for any building in the so-called coastal resilience incentive zone, that uh, any building there, you know, it's commercial or residential, that you can use your tax code to encourage people to mitigate and to take the actions they're going to need. It might be raising a building, it might be um, salt marsh migration, it might be private 
culverts being replaced. They might be moving the mechanicals into the second floor. And you can abate the increase in assessed value as you can under 79E to encourage those kinds of projects. Um, it also has something to do with granting new bonding authority to municipalities to plan long term. Um, it's hard to plan 10 years, let alone 100, 100 years out. But what the bill does is it says you can create a bonding authority um, which you can replenish to prepare for even 50 years out for something you know that, that will overwhelm the tax base if an event at has to be dealt with yeah. at, at one time and to plan much further. And unfortunately, um, 2100 is the number, we, the date we used, but, and it will, man, we'll be all long gone, right? But the sea level rise um, is going to uh, continue maybe a foot a decade after, after that. Um, so the mills, uh, you name it, these are important mm -hmm. resources. And to me, the whole point here was to how do we sustain our economy? How do we sustain our way of life? How do, how do we keep our roads and bridges going? How do we let communities respond incrementally with no regrets um, decisions and uh, be able to move forward? So, um, thanks for just a moment to explain, and that, that Senate Bill 185 is something new. Um, as this report, this is perhaps the best that has been, 17 miles of coastline, right? I think this is the best report that has been done anywhere in the nation. And Senate Bill 185 has provisions which are also first in the nation of trying to give tools to local municipalities to encourage um, people and to protect the tax base, too. So, well, thank, thank you. you so much for yeah. coming, and thank you, Kyle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that you know, as you were as you were speaking, Kyle, and you hinted at it too, David, is that is the no regrets. I mean, we have enough in front of us that, that <laughs> to do that is important in the town that we can easily work without regret on making some changes that help overall infrastructure, but that are also helpful for preparing us for, for sea rise activities along the Salmon Falls River. So that one that one sort of rang true for me. So well thank you. Oh, any did that? Any other questions? Oh, we still have the Senator here and Kyle here from SRPC. All right, then I will uh, close the public information session and uh, call to order the meeting of the Select Board on Monday, July 17th at 6:35. Good job, Kyle. And let me bring up my DC agenda. And Kyle, I, I am going to look for that application. I just just sure. swamped. No, that's fine. Like I said, we've got we've got some time to to do it. Um, I just know that um, the woman that was is helping at Homeland Security she was asking. Yeah, it was. So, did you check with people? They must have. They so they're they're the con, they're the supposedly they're the sort of conduit between FEMA and us in Homeland Security. All right. So. Um, and they don't have it um, or can't find it. So okay. uh, the uh, we did a grant application. We did two actually, but uh, the second one, I mean, the first one never made it. It never went made it out even in the first round of approvals. But the second one, the second grant application was one of two approved by the state review panel that was sort of coordinated by FEMA. And so it was sent to the national for national review. We got all excited. You know, it was a really big thing, and um, it looked hopeful. And then within weeks, we heard that the national review panel of FEMA, the FEMA coordinated for, for this national review, was sort of shifting its focus from uh, applying monies to help with infrastructures that were damaged, uh, like the Sligo Road cover by a rain event, to giving the money for planning efforts, you know, like probably like what you know Kyle just uh, gave us tonight. So, so, so the Kyle is now working. Uh, I don't know what, what point you came in, but we received a seven thousand dollar technical assistance grant right. that will allow Kyle or others at SRPC to help us with maybe reapplying for grant money for those slide work colors. So that's what that is about. And again, thank you, Kyle. Yeah, Appreciate no problem. It. All right. Um, so we call me to order uh, approval of minutes of last Monday. I did add just a, I, I added the uh, amount of the road work that Jeff, the initial road work, because that wasn't in there. So I added the 17,000 just to be there. And I put fire truck instead of truck somewhere. That was it. Okay.
Can I add a, well, one to double check on um, a purchase order? Um, it was noted that the purchase had already been approved for the Towns and Energy Service call, but I think that belongs under the purchase order from the fire. It could be. Um, I highlighted it so I wouldn't lose it. Um, at the bottom, for Towns and Energy Annual Service for the heating no. unit. No. Because they had lost the original. So I believe it goes there because they had came in. Remember it was said the same night that um, they they had their service call and then they also included the police to do their annual right. service call the same night. And then they ended up losing the original purchase order, so we had to re-sign it last or last week. So it was five March. I I will I don't recall, so I'm happy to, to make that change. Okay. okay. Yeah. Let's follow up with that. All right. Otherwise, we're good. Yeah. Sorry. So with that change, Sally, I think that we will uh, we will uh, say that we approve those those minutes. Uh, all right. Let me bring up my agenda again. Uh, community input. Any questions or comments from anywhere public here tonight? My name is Rosiris. I own a 24 apartments in uh, Rollingsford. Every year. Every time we need a sticker of our program to get a sticker because I'm no resident in Ronsford, I'm resident in Dover. I talked to last year, you approved the sticker. Now we need a new sticker, the same issue again. We have dumpsters in the apartments that we need or no use, but sometimes the tenants move out and leave a lot of things, so we can put them on the top. So what was it? so we approved it last year? Yes. I don't, did you know this? No, I thought I was here. You, you. I, I was coming to get the sticker, and they called you on the office. Ah, mm. all right. So it wasn't a board. It was not no, a no. board. Ah, no. mm. I overstepped. Mm. So, so you do have a dumpster. I have a dumpster. You have a dumpster. Yes. You would also like. A transfer station sticker for those times when one sometimes the tenants move out and leave a lot of things and we uh, can put them on the dumpster because I'll be full of the dumpster. So you know what our concern is? Our concern is that when we hand out a transfer sticker to someone like yourself who lives in another dis another town, that it raises the risk. We're not we're not saying that you would do that, but it raises the probability of the risk that some of the some the stem. Stuff from Dover, I think you said Dover is going to end up. Yeah. Well, I have Dover sticker too. I have Dover sticker on the truck. And in those cases, when a, when uh, a tenant, the truck, let me say something. The truck will have a plow on the truck, on plow out yards. Uh, the truck can make maybe 250 to 300 miles a year. You think that the truck will be going back and forth to Dover? I have, I have four vehicles, personal vehicles. Ask for one for the, this truck because this truck stays with the apartments all the time. We park in the on the apartments. This truck stays in Rollinsford? Yes. We park in on the 102 Oak Street. On the parking lot. Next, oh, at the plow next door. And we'll have a dumpster on the 72 Oak Street. Oh, oh you're my name. You own the property next to me. Ah. They do dump a lot of stuff at one anyway. Okay. <laughs> he, so he, he empties his dumpster every Monday at 8. <laughs> so, Board, what, what do you think? Um, I have sticker for many years. I never, you never have problem with us. Well, we're, you know, we're just trying to be uh, more disciplined about how we hand out dump stickers and to whom we hand out dump stickers. That. So, is, is there an objection? Uh, well, they never do it for us at all. <laughs> True. We did not. But he doesn't have tenants here. He was doing it for his relatives who live here, not not for tenants. Right. This is a case of a. Of, uh, I have 24 apartments. The, right. Is there a um, landlord? 
Possibly. Four years. He, yes, because he said that he includes. Yes, I have one for dumps. Yes, so he company. dumps their trash for them. That's part of his rent right, agreement. Right. I don't know where it was. I don't remember it was. Well, I mean, my, my only concern is that if someone moves out and just gives you a lot of stuff to them, what well, is how they live the apartment when they live? I mean, that's, that's sort of a cost of doing business, right? So it's not where the, it's, that's not the, the taxpayers and Rollins for its problem. It's really the cost of doing so business, meaning right? So meaning you're suggesting you call Got junk or something? Well, whatever. I mean, got junk. You know, you get an extra, I, extra, I pay taxes in Rollins. <laughs> right. So you call for a, an extra um, dumpster to pick up. I mean, that's what the, the, the apartment buildings are on me have to do. When they have a mattress or someone moves out, they have to have an extra pickup that we have. So you're talking about the mattresses that the you're mattress behind? The mattress group, no. no. You try the trash, the living size of the refrigerator and the food, uh, toys, kids' toys, uh, items that go on the inside of the bed. The big items, I call the dumpster that pick them up. Okay. And now I have a couch next to the dumpster. How, how often does this happen in a year? Just help us. Six, seven times a year. You know, we'd be happy to give a temporary sticker. So you lose a tenant, you have a big cleanup, you know, we could come in and issue a, a temporary sticker for like whatever, three days or seven days. Yeah. It's what we do with, you know, construction folks, you know, things that are, they're, they're, they're events, right? They're tied to an event. So it's not an ongoing kind of thing. It's tied to an event. We'll give uh, uh, access to the transfer station. I have, excuse me, I have three weeks now. My only day, like, I'm working out of state. I'm New Hampshire resident, but I'm working in uh, Rhode Island. Every Tuesday, I go down. I come back Friday. The only day I can do business, it's Monday. I have two weeks coming Monday that change the hours. Nobody notifies like the. I was here two o'clock. I took it the cross four, the crossing one summer. It always closes at one. No. Oh, the tra Oh, you're talking about the transfer station or the no, office? No. The office closes office. at one. Right. Um, there are summer hours, but not. This is not. The Monday hours, not a summer. Okay. I mean, we're part, we are a part-time government. That's I understand true. that. Yeah. But I have full-time job. I have house. I have wife. I have. I can go every time. The only day it's, I can go to the. You can send us an email. It's Saturday. You can send us an email. We can do this by email. The only day I can go to the to the field. It's Saturdays. And Saturdays the office is not open to get the sticker. We can handle the special request by email. He, yeah, if he sends us an email saying this this weekend I've had a tenant that moves that, that moved out on Saturday I'll need to go to the dump and and so we can take care of that we can make that available at the dump and you can you can pick it up there. That's work. We'd be I mean that that would that would work that works for me so that. You know that in a way that that's you know that it honors the fact that you know we're not actually just playing giving you a dump sticker, but we also knowing that you have these special needs, we can provide that special access for you. Just just give us you know sometime before that Saturday, just send us an email and send it to admin. What about the money? At Rollinsford. .nh.us okay. I will have to pick up this.
Admission. We'll keep it for you. We'll, we'll, we'll send it. We'll have a piece of paper that we'll have available at the transfer station on that Saturday. I assume, I think you said Saturday is the day. Yeah. So we would have that available. So you would not have it, but you would go in, you'd say, here, here I am. I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Viziris. Viziris. And I'm Mr. Viziris, and there's supposed to be a letter for me that allows me to bring my garbage today. Okay. Okay? Thank you. you. Ahead of time, yeah, we need to know this ahead of time, yes. Thank you. Any other public comments? Oh, I didn't ask him. Caroline, do you know, this is Mr. Maziris, I think that's how he pronounces it. Do you have any idea how he spells his last name? Yes. V-E-Z-I-R-I-S. Try it again. V-E-Z-I-R-I-S. Welfare has been resolved, so I'm. Oh, no, no. here to see you. All right. Well, thank you. Did we have another question for Caroline? There's another thing under welfare that you can resolve yourself. So, right. I, I know, but I thought some at some point we said the last Caroline she comes in. Does that sound familiar to you? Question about that letter. This one. Oh no. Oh yes. Thank you. The funding. We're not sure what this letter is about, Caroline. Oh yeah, it's the. Celia um, can speak to that. I just put it on letterhead. So. Oh, okay. So when we get there, all right. All right. We'll we'll do it under rec in uh, in the admin section. Okay. I'm sorry. Was there another public input, Nancy? You uh, the temporary permit that you're giving out is it going to be free for him to be able to to dump it this seven times a year? Uh, we'll have to check our register. We'll have to check. I don't know what we do when we have construction people, but we'll figure that out. Let me make it over that. With um, construction folks, it's the demolition all right, so we can, we can talk about this maybe and come up with those. Yeah. And how would you know would be whatever it feels like, you know, to get whatever kind of refrigerator or whatever. It seems what he was trying to say, I think, was for those items, the like larger items, like toys and whatever else he says, um, he has an extra pick. I think it was like a pickup or extra dumpster at that time. It's like food. It's the food and, and the stuff. Stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we could, uh, I mean, whatever, whatever transfer station sticker costs for him, we could just charge him for the first time. I mean, that's something to consider. We can, we can put it on the agenda for next week. Yeah. That's what I did today. Um, all right, department head business. I, there's not a plethora of department heads here. Um, I can speak to Joe's Garage only that we're still looking for the, for the plans. Um, Michael, you were going to go to Doherty Lane under highway and transfer. Oh, and your report? I saw no evidence of, uh, of um, cloud damage at the end of the driveway at all, actually. Um, there were some okay. that cracked. He had a little bit of a um, indentation on the left center of his driveway. That wasn't so no sign of plow damage. Oh, that's what he was indicating that the okay. plow had gone by and, and torn up the end, you know, crumbled yeah. up the end of the... Well, shall we ask Caroline to, to draft something, and then you can take a look at it and yeah. see if, if it jives with what you saw. Mm -hmm. We've been over there before looking at... Um, really? Yeah, torn mm -hmm. up lawn maybe once before, too, I think. I don't remember. After a run, but... Okay. Thank you for doing that. Uh, dead tree notices. I think Caroline is still working on uh, sending out a notice to the residents. But if we're under highway. Yes, we're still there. Um, the planning board brought something up. Um, so I want to check it out. Um, on Wentworth Street, where the new Chittenburg development mm -hmm. is, they have a, um, a Cape Cod Garland around. Um, the yeah, and it's designed so there's a cross driveways. It's just a little bit of a 
Goes across, right? Yeah. That's how it was designed. Yeah. So the, so water doesn't go flooding down into their driveways. Oh, they I have see. taken it. Someone has taken it upon themselves at all the houses that are being occupied at the moment. So I would assume it's controlled, but I haven't confirmed that. Have put in little um, um, ramps. Uh, um, tar um, ramps into the street. So, if you, think, if you think of a Cape Cod berm, here's the little, you know, the, 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 um, the um, curve on, on um, South Street looks like. You know, it's, it's, I know what a Cape Cod berm looks like. I'm good with that. Okay. Believe it or not. Okay. So, let's just say this is the profile of the berm. I'm not an artist. So. They have, out of pavement, out of tar, created little ramps into the street. So their cars drive up the little ramp and then down over it, instead of just doing a little bump and into their driveways, which will cause problems for with the clouds in, in the uh, winter time. So, yeah, wasn't this the this, this was the problem last year when they went around to, to get an answer when they were putting in those sidewalks and berms, and they, they went against what was in the plan, didn't they? They did indeed. Okay. So, Right, but this was not, it was the size of the berm, it was the size of the berm or something that was changed, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was that issue, but this, this one never, yeah, they didn't ask us for that. Correct. Right. This is born out of, it's the same situation. Right. In my mind. So I would think we'd want to send, you know what, and I don't have the address, so I can get them. I'll go get them. So is this a... So who, who manages this? The planning board or us? Oh, us, because it was there. It's post planning yeah. review. Okay. So we should send this letter to Chinberg. Is he still? Um, I would send it to the individual homeowners. Individual you? homeowners? Because I mean, we don't really have proof that Chinberg himself did it. Uh huh. Okay. And it how many? It's odd that all of the houses that actually have occupancy permits and people living in them have them. And they're still building on the street. But there were three or four. I have to go back up and look again. We can have Tom drafted. Okay. Or the. Uh, but it's definitely going to be an issue when they plow. I mean, it's. Mm -hmm. They stick out pretty far, too, actually. I don't think anyone's driving a car that's so low that couldn't possibly go over this. I mean, it's just a little tight. I don't know, but uh, I've lost my. All right. Uh, well, thank you for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Uh, manager at the transfer station. I, Jody, I don't know how you feel about this, but I'd like to sort of put this on hold and put something we can tackle from budget, pro the budget process for 2018. Is that? That's fine. Do you mind if I work on the logistics of it? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, coming up with a budget, you know, working out a budget and... Uh, just, it, just the whole how it would work. Um, who would do what, when, as far as the staffing. Right, but this would be just you yeah. thinking it through, not yeah. talking to staff or anything, right? Just, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you'd come with us awesome. Sure. Okay. Um, welfare, we don't have that case after all, uh, but uh, I would like to bring up for discussion board uh, a, a, you know, potential logistics issue that we have to resolve in the fall. So Caroline will be taking uh, courses and won't be available to come meet with us on Monday for welfare. And so, so we need to have some kind of protocol to follow in the case where we do have welfare cases. So uh, one is that, um, you know, the board can sort of technically just, or just when something comes up, try to meet Tuesday, Wednesday, something. Perhaps Caroline can meet with you ahead of time, mm -hmm. review the case, and you can present it to us. Sure. Which seems like a yeah. a viable plan. Yeah. Does that does that work for you, Mike? Well, that was easy. Uh, when is she taking classes? It starts the end of August. Okay. So, and then she'll be only probably through November. 
Yeah, you can check with her, something like that. I would uh, say yes. I got yes. an email about it months ago. Uh, yeah. I, thought it was, I don't think it was that long, was it? I thought it was only the semester. Well, the end of August. Uh, but I mean, no, but I don't think it's a, I, I, in my mind, like I think it's a trimester. I don't know it if it's a be full just a semester's course. I, I don't remember yeah. what she told us. It was a half of one. Yeah. Uh, and some of them in a program with two credits are only half a semester each. Yeah. Right. So. so I don't know. But in any event, whether it's eight weeks or 12 weeks. Yeah. Yeah. She told us, I don't remember. So why don't you touch, why don't you touch base with Caroline and the two of you can work out what, what might work. And, um, and that was Thank you. All right, we're on to town administration. Uh, project updates, uh, culverts. You saw that I sent uh, an email this morning to Parker and Daughters because we haven't received their bonds yet. And they said we should get them this week. They didn't answer my other question about when now do they think they will start. So I didn't hear back unless something came this afternoon. Um, so we're still. I did touch base with Royal Tanner to make sure they could send the contract to us. It would be sort of ready to go once we did get the bonds and everything is in place. Um, I also talked to Aaron about the project oversight. So the two weeks when um, Jeff is not going to be here. And uh, what, what we have to keep in mind is that USDA normally ex expects your engineer to be doing this. And what we got from USDA was approval for both Jeff and I to step in and provide project oversight. So we had to send our resumes, they had to bless us, all that stuff. So, so, um, so that person who's going to sort of take over Jeff's two weeks has similarly need to be approved by the USDA. Because they really do expect that it's going to be someone from the engineering firm, not necessarily the $200 an hour engineer, but somebody from the engineering firm who would manage that. Um, but I wondered if, uh, I haven't met the assistant and Jeff's assistant, but I wonder, is he is he somebody who we might tap to do those two weeks? He probably would be able to. He has, um, Wasn't he a foreman? For DOT. So, he can't, um, I guess he never drove equipment um, per se. Recently, but doesn't need to, right? Correct. Yeah. So he probably has that background. So even though, so that would uh, we'd end up having to pay him more for hours because he probably doesn't have a full time schedule now. But it would just be for two weeks, so hopefully that would work. So if the board doesn't have any objections, I can sort of work on that and see if that will work its way out. The other uh, good thing about it is that because he is here, I mean Jeff can could do whatever training is necessary, the, you know, two or three days before he leaves to get him to understand how those log books and field books have to look and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, all right, then I will, I will uh, pursue that with... And if that doesn't work, we can find someone from Marvel Tanner available. Well, they, uh, it has to be somebody that they, uh, yeah, either from them or somebody that the, U it, it just said it has to pass muster with the USDA. So this person, it's a town employee, you know, he's got a good background, so I'm hopeful that we could be able to, right. to sell that to, to USDA. All right, then I will work on that. I don't have any other comments about uh, the Culver Project um, transfer station. Have you seen yeah, it? Yeah, it looks good. Awesome. Far, so good. Um, before the um, pavement went down, so I haven't been over today. It's, we just got back last night. It looks good. I was so bummed that the retaining wall was going to be covered up. <laughs> it was so pretty. It's a nice <laughs> retaining wall, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And they, they were able to use the, uh, the, the old blocks to build the... Yep. Whatever you want to say, yeah, so that was good. Okay, so we're back in business with the transportation. The I don't know when the uh, new compactor is getting hooked up though. I the, the concrete pad's not in place. I, yeah. Um, Do you know the answer to that? Yep. Yeah. They're going to be putting them down sometime this week, um, and then it takes seven days to cure. Okay. So then the compactor can go on top of that after it cures. Um, 
the recycling, he's a little worried that he may have to put down plywood um, for the recycling bins on top of those pads because they're not going to have to seven days to cure. Uh, and I was like, I don't think plywood's going to be strong enough. So I, I was talking to him about that um, today. He was here before. Um, mm -hmm. So, any, any so he wanted to put plywood down, and I didn't think it was strong enough. So he was going to look into that. And the other thought is just to leave the bins to the side and dump them and just have the bins sit on the dirt for a week. It was only a week. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. I just shut it up. Right. So I'd rather. We can have people there help. Right. Right. So I'd rather wait a week than ruin a brand new concrete pad. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's. I really don't think a bunch of plywood's going to help with a, that big canister. Mm -hmm. So, but the compactor is ready to go. It's there. It's just waiting to be poured. Poured now, seven day wait, and then Atlantic will come and hook it all up. So, great. Okay. Um, any other project related questions or comments? It does look good. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll move on. The quarterly budget, what we thought. So I, I worked on the, on the quarterly budget report this weekend, and I'll have the report for us next Monday. But early thoughts, um, we, you know, we have to, have to seriously rebudget the highway department because of the of winter. So we were able to do that really from a contingency budget that we need. So you'll see that next week. And the other area that needs rebudgeting is town hall maintenance. So I, I haven't fully um, recommended a set of rebudgeting. I'm still working things over. Uh, other thoughts? I, I had a question about the rec, um, the summer rec. So the revenue didn't come in as, as to the level we anticipated. And I, uh, although Caroline said there's still some money that may come in because of uh, bus, uh, yes, field trip. Every Tuesday, they're taking a field trip. Next week, they're taking four or five field trips. Uh, so um, the parents have to pay the $5 for the bus, um, which upsets the bus price, obviously. Um, we do, we are lower on staff, because we have one less staff member that we hired, and then um, we send you the offer. So, so that's okay. a line item. All right, so and then you also have winter rec money that we haven't touched yet. So if we have to, we may have to use that. Um, but you're going well, through ten dollars for popsicles a day, so <laughs> well, my question is so so the revenue is the revenue, the expense is the expense. Mm -hmm. Are are you anticipating that the expenses will stay within that I have not looked at the numbers. Lester was gonna come in and do the numbers with Caroline. Okay, so um, it would be I important to jump to know if it's this week or next week he's going to do that. Okay. Lester's... Is he the finance person? He's the, he's the one uh, adjusting all the books. Okay. Because you have shirts coming in, you have donations coming in, yeah. you have registrations coming in, and he's the go-to. Okay. So. So, so in my mind, it would be really important to ensure that the expenses... Yeah. I think, Revenue is one thing, and it would be nice to get all the revenue, but yeah. to ensure that the expenses don't go beyond where where we've budgeted. And if they could be lower, that's even better, because we don't have the revenue right. to offset. And we're into week four right now. We're in week four. We're running by fast. Um, Out of how many weeks? Eight. So we're almost halfway. there. So, wow. That's, 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 that's amazing. I know. So next week, they're paving the back parking lot. So instead of having the kids deal with safety issues, they're just going to take their trips all week. Oh, that's clever. So that's and a good idea. Trace Lorian uh, has let her know, so because she picks up her kids for her camp there too, so she's just going to pick one at a different spot. I think a region or something. She said. Mm -hmm. okay. So because everybody's going to be dropped off in the front on that first week or that week that they're paving, and then they're going to get on the bus right on the road because there's no yeah. place else to be. Yeah. 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 So it's only for. Well, it's nice to be able to be flexible like that. So other, let's put finances aside for a minute. We're almost halfway through. So how are things, are, how are things going? Uh, better. We had bumps. And, yeah. Um, the bumps along the way, they're 
added more water time this week, thank goodness. Um, and um, we brought in more picnic tables. We had ant problems and lunch bags and little things that needed to be addressed, sunscreen issues and things like that. But the feedback has been wonderful. I actually ran into a parent today that her daughter was there last year and she's there this year and she said, night and day difference. So, and that was just off the street. The kid just happened to be wearing a shirt. And I go, oh, you go to the same camp like it too. So that's nice. Okay, that's going on. So, so, um, so Caroline has some observations from her end from a you know processing the money and point of view. Yes. So I said, well, you know, often you know this is the first year. Yeah, next you know, year I would like to get that off of her hands. It would be. <laughs> It would be nice to do a lessons learned. Yes. So that so there are going to be lessons learned that the committee's going to want to do for the program. Yes. We, we don't need to be to get, get involved in. But kind of a lessons learned on the financing and stuff, the town I think needs to have to be part of that. So it could be two different yes. processes and that's fine. So just keep that in mind that at some point we'll want the opportunity to and if you've got some ideas about that would be even, even better for like yes. next year going forward. So, okay. Excellent. Oh, and how many children are, are coming? Roughly seventy-five-ish. Are you getting a lot of them? I know that last year, I mean, it was the, the attendance was like this. It oscillated wildly. Is that still? No, it, it's pretty consistently at fifty, fifty-five or so. Today was thirty. Today was only thirty-five. Not what I think. <laughs> the, the smallest group is the largest group. The youngest group is the largest group. Well, that's that's good. That and sort of like grow with the, the and program. Then, um, they get like five on Sundays, five counselors because there's so many. Of them. Yeah. If they all show up, it's like 39. And if you recall, when we were looking at the data that we didn't subscribe to. Yeah. <laughs> the the bump in the population is actually. The one to five year mm -hmm. old, and so I mean they're going to get a year older every year. Yeah. So you know, it's going to have an impact on grade school and and for these uh, probably the summer summer work as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was so. Uh, those were my early thoughts about the budget. I mean overall, I would say the revenue is coming in uh, as planned. Uh, the expenses, it's maintenance for here and the highway department, and I'm looking at how that will we can rebudget that out, bring that forward next next week. Perfect. Okay. CIP. And they're coordinating schedules, so we can hopefully start meeting in the next two weeks. You still want to sit down, Mike, with me? Yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll wait to hear from you. Uh, DOT Old Middle Lane Bridge, it's just so we don't forget to respond to the state, which we have not yet done. Rec Committee, I've already talked about the budget, so, so that's why that was there. Unless there's anything else you want to say about the song rec committee. Okay. Store Committee, that's just a placeholder tool? Well, the meeting in, on the 25th, so we can bring it to Okay. Copying, scanning, we thought we'd wait till the budget process, I think. Is that? Possible? Yeah, because all right, well, I'm, I'm going to put them both on hold on the transfer station and this, and so we don't have to. Yeah. I'll, and I'll put them in the budget prep, my budget prep notes. Uh, policies and procedures welfare. I, I made a valiant attempt to get all the way through it and and, and really just couldn't. It is massive, isn't it? That's fun reading. It is <laughs> massive. I did have, I mean, there are a bunch of questions, edits, whatever. And so, I mean, Michael, I don't know if you were able to. Yeah. So, I'll, if you don't have the link, I mean, I, I'm making comments through it just so I, and I've taken yours and, and put them in. Okay. So I'll send you the link so that if you want to continue to read or to make additional comments, you can you can do that. Okay. Um, let me just make that note because I just want to get Okay. Oh, goodness, 
since we're we're down to standing items. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, activities and updates. What's what's going on this week, Michael? Well, this this means meeting on Thursday. We're going to Farmington for their station up there. Mm -hmm. On a separate track. Um, there are folks looking at um, the possibility of contracted services with other municipalities as an option. So oh, okay. uh, there was a fact-finding conversation with Joe or Carl Russo yesterday. Um, we will hope to have a report on that uh, coming shortly. It's off a Thursday night, but... Okay, very good. Jody? Uh, joint loss is meeting on the 31st at 9, and REC is going to meet again on August 6th. Okay. I have SRPC policy uh, this Friday, and um, I forgot to mention this as part of our, just weekly items, but just for the public record, uh, our bond money arrived, the board knows because I sent out an email, but the bond money arrived Thursday. So we have money for all three projects sitting in our New Hampshire P different accounts. Uh, one set, one pot of money, the culvert money, is a short-term loan. And that won't get resolved until we actually finish, close the project with the USDA. They pay off that loan and, and, and um, our project ends. So I'm arranging a meeting with Caroline and our treasurer, Beverly, so that uh, we can have a process so that when we're ready to have her transfer money from PDIP to our citizens account, that you know she's in the loop and uh, has whatever documentation she needs and this sort of thing in order to make that happen. So that will be going on. Um, okay, that's it for activity. So I guess it's folder work. Right? What, what do you have for us? Pardon? It is public, yes. It's a, right. yes. Well, you have, we have a letter about current use. Yes. When, when the assessors were out evaluating property, there were a couple of pieces of property that um, were, you know, there are rules and regulations associated with current use. You, you, can't, you can't even mow it, you know, more than field mowing twice a year. And otherwise, you're kind of using the land the way a, a, another homeowner might use the land. <clears throat> therefore she get tax for it. So this was something that they found where a resident was had um, equipment stored, I guess, on current use. So we're just sending a letter that says that. Are, are, did you read the letter? No, I read it. Well, let's... Um, we talked about this in the meeting. We said we would send a letter and say if you would give them until a certain time. We were giving... Uh, the resident till August 31st uh, to bring the usage back to qualifying standards. Uh, otherwise, they, they will lose current use. So that's essentially what it says. Did you want to take a look at that? I thought you were going to read it. That's fine. Right. Oh, I can read no, it. No, no, that's fine. I you can read it. Why don't no, no, you read it? I don't need to read that by the you want to do it in public or <laughs> should we just read it? But I knew what it was about. Uh, I misunderstood. Um, right, dear Mr. Phipps, we are writing to inform you. Of findings brought to our attention by the town's assessing firm. Please see the attached letter in regard to your property of 20 Trojan Way tax according to current use regulations. If land use is not brought back to qualifying standards under current use regulations by the 31st of August of this year, it will be assessed a land use change tax in amount of $12,350 as recommended by the avatar. We regret the inconvenience and hope that you understand the town is, the town is bound by the laws governing current use as set forth by the state of New Hampshire sincerely. Are you good with that? All right, I will sign it. All right. Should we go? Why is that mine? Where it is. Okay, we have one, one building for a minute. Uh, for 2017-081, 24 Heritage Drive. They are uh, doing siding and roof repairs. Uh, exactly. Replacement with vinyl siding. Okay. Roof replacement with standard roof signals of the same type. Mr. 
the clerk has uh, reviewed it, the value of all the building permit is $28,550. It is $315. Certificate of occupancy is also single family home at 46 Old Mill Lane. The arrest needs to sign. I already did and stamped it. Okay. It's a sewer, a sub sewage and disposal system. Well, the night the journey wasn't here. Maybe they just didn't pick it up? No, it says the OS needs to sign. It's been back. It wasn't in the holder last week. It's been stamped and signed, but I'll sign it again. That's what I'm saying. She wasn't here. That's why I signed it. Isn't it just your signature, not? It's the stamp that you signed. And they, yeah. Apparently that wasn't good enough for whatever it was, so here you go. No, I found all the little ones, too. Even though it's the same information. Oh, it says you're going to have to sign and fill this out, or... Town stamp and sign. So I did the town stamp and sign. Apparently they weren't. Oh. Okay, there's a blue one. Okay. <laughs> it's just these carrot and marks. That's it. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Oh. We'll get the study of the documents today. Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, this is our. Uh, okay. Donation. Would you like to explain why we have it tonight? I have continued to go out to different businesses in the area to get donations for supplies and goods. So I went to Walmart and they refused to look at any of our paperwork unless it was on official town letterhead and had our tax ID number in it. I have the tax ID number at home but I've been putting in the thank you cards after we get the donation. So it's not broadcasted in all of our paperwork. So, or on our website. <laughs> our tax ID. When, yeah, because this form is on our website as well, and it's there too. So. Well, I it's just added the tax ID number today yeah. to the bottom of the form. So do you need us to do something with this? So I asked Caroline if I could have it on official letterhead to take it back to Walmart and ask for a donation. And um, she said that it would be... Um, appreciated if the select board knew about it and possibly if you wanted to sign it you could if not I can just take it back to Walmart and request it's the same form we've been handing oh, out all, right. all they did was at the bottom added our tax ID number right here and it's our tax ID is actually on the website as well where it says donate here <laughs> so I have no problem with that Okay. Do you have the stuff has it on it too. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck. It'll take a couple of weeks to hear back. So this is the paperwork from our accountant. We needed to sign this last week. Oh yes. And we forgot. I had it off. I had it out of the thing. That's what it was. Yeah. Caroline asked me why we didn't sign it, and I said I take it out to read it. <laughs> so we do this every every year. It just says that we've done everything to make sure that he has the data he wants. We weren't hiding anything. We gave him everything we looked for. We didn't, you know, we complied with we took, you know, complied with everything and had full disclosures. That's sort of what it says. So unless the board has a problem, I think it's just my signature. Okay, so I will be happy to sign it. So please
And I don't think we have a final bill yet from him. Because we have a, we, you know, we do a partial payment for when he does it. The general fund statement for the annual report, and then this is the complete. And so I, um, uh, I'm about to put a notice up to the as a P, as PR that says we've just posted this. It's on Google Drive. Okay. And at the same time, because uh, I just didn't ran out of time last week, I'm going to have Caroline draft something about the DOT paving. Remember you asked. Yeah, uh, well, I sent a blurb to. Um, oh, you Tia, sent one. Okay. Tia to send it out. I'll send it to you. To, oh, okay. It's not so, out yet. It's just plan ahead. These are the ones oh. that are being paved this year. Okay. You know, oh, all right. So you've already done it. Then that's that's mm -hmm. fine. I'll resend it. It's just it, it hasn't been sent out yet. I'll move it. I just did it on Friday before I left. Um, uh, this is the bridge estimate for the bridge A that's been sitting in our folder. Yeah, that's that's what that entry is on our agenda. Yep. So, um, purchase order 1303 to ready care for the transfer station shots for the new um, employee up to $150 because it's a series of shots. Yep. You so just moved it. Okay. Second. Any discussion on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 What, do you know what his last name is? It just says Paul. Oh, I realize that I, have, I don't think I've met him. I have not met him. Move to accept purchase to order 967 to William Renaud, R E N A U D, um, to roadside mowing throughout the town um, for $4,500. This is the guy from Vermont, I think, so we knew we were going to end up paying more. Yeah. Michael? Michael, second from Michael. Any discussion on this? All right. I think we've, yeah, so far. Um, it's, it's a bit more than what we paid last year. In any event, I will call the question. I'll also be able to say aye. 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 to accept purchase order 968 to Urban Tree Service for tree work throughout town, dead trees, and overhanging on Sligo Road, Bear Road, and Old Dunn Lane, and to raise the canopy on 4th Street um, for a total of $10,000. Okay. Um, okay. Well, it's the entire library. I think we have expenses already. That's what I'm going to write. <coughs> expenses yet. Sorry, I, I could have sworn we did. But we're good. So that's the budgeted amount. So are there any other questions or comments? My only concern yes. is that um, I understand he thinks he's going to be able to get the bulk of the problems that he needs to get done now. But he spends the entire line. trees are on Sligo, Bear, and Old Mill Lane, and 4th Street is raising the canopy because it's touching trucks. We no. can change the no. no. uh, We can, um, you know, deal with the issue if it does arise. It may not arise, and I just, I'm going to throw it out. 
You know, I, I don't know why well, he's not here to answer this question, but you know, we had, what is it, whatever, 60 dead trees? So I don't know, he did some, we did some last year, and I don't remember now, like, what percentage of the 60 at this point that we're, so. The word of one of those 60 becomes, or whatever's left, 30, becomes a crisis. Do we have the resources to take care of that all? If you're confident that we can find it somewhere I think else, we can find it. Well, if it falls on its own, then it'll be all ready on the We just, that's right. It's a different, it's a different problem. <laughs> unless it's expensive. <laughs> right. unless it's and then so, our parents will take yeah. care of wire lines and stuff like that. Yeah, so I mean, so it's a question, it's, it is risk management. Are you? It's fine. Do you think you can find it elsewhere? Are you, are you good too? Well, I don't think they can find it anymore. <laughs> Well, I, I, the we, line is for tree cutting. It's the whole budget. I understand that. Those are the most important trees. According to Urban, I have to take their professional advice. It's a risk that we're gambling with, yes. And we have six months to go. So. And storms at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but this is also preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. so. When you raise the canopy and you take care of your new trees before the winter comes, you're in better, hopefully, stead to withstand. All right. Well, personally, uh, you know, I was willing to accept where the where the board thought they wanted to be. I mean, I I think we'll. My understanding is like a tree is not more than a thousand dollars. Okay. So I think we would be able to deal with a tree. <laughs> If you add an S to that, I don't know. But where, we, where, where money is out to come from is potentially welfare. You know, we, we, over the last few years anyway, and you can't count on it, it's sort of like special ed on the school budget, right? You know, one really difficult case can, can uh, take all, all the most of the money. Uh, and then the other is, you know, once the compactor is in place, we will have a little bit of savings in the transfer station uh, with the hauling. So those are some of the places where we might be able to do that. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's a very weak aye. Mm. The, higher, the higher the money goes, the, the lower our voices go, mm. if you've noticed. <laughs> It's a reason. Right, thank you. Move to accept purchase order 1302 to Red Shoe Barn um, under transfer station um, for steel toed um, safety shoes. For Oh, they put his last name here. Uh, for Paul Eames. E A M E E. E A M E S. For 150. Second. Any discussion? It wasn't fair to say aye. 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 Last week we appointed my two Stratford Regional Planning Commission and me as an alternate. Yes. Um, it is in here. Do we need signatures or did she just not? Because I already saw the email. But... No, I sent it to Cynthia. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just there. It's just still in here. Okay. Yeah. Because I've already reported it and. Uh, and I saw the email from that. Yep. Okay. So Cynthia was fine. All right. That's it. Everything else is old. Public input? Okay. You go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, two comments, um, or two subjects. One, Chinford development over on Wetland Street, um, when it was going through the planning process, I know the neighborhood was really strong, um, opinionated, I guess is the way to put it, about putting sidewalks in there. And so the road is narrow, they took from the road to put in the sidewalks. So there's supposed to be no parking signs that are supposed to go up there too so that there's no parking on that road because um, it's not a full 25 feet um, road or standard width of a road. So the, bar, uh, the little asphalt ramps might affect emergency crews getting in there too. So something to consider 
when you're looking at that. My other thing was is that in regards to the rec committee budget, um, I know that the gentleman who's doing it is working very hard, and I am still out there trying to bring in income to help offset any deficits we have. We still have t-shirts for sale that could bring in some more income. Thank you very much. I would suggest getting them soon if you'd like them, because I'm down to um, one or two in a couple of sizes. Very good. Thank you, Susan. Anything else? Well, my goodness, it is 7.33, and I think unless the board has an objection, that we are ready to adjourn. Thank you, Thank you.